Welcome to Explain It Like I'm 5 using a report as an email body. Hey, I'm Eric. And um, in Business Sense, we have a lot of components uh, and we can do a lot of things, but sometimes, you know, figure out how to combine and what fits into what. And, and that can be way more complicated than it, it should be. Um, so in this video, I'm going to take you through the process of using a report as the body of an email. So we're going to send an email, but we're going to generate the body in the email from a report. Um, I think we're going to use an invoice. Um, and I'm, I'm going to try to take you slowly through all the steps here because it's actually fairly easy. Uh, but I know that this can see this can seem like a complex process, um, so that's why we'll, we'll we'll take it nice and slow here. Um, and um, I'm gonna start right here. I have just created a new extension, um, and this is the the code we get. So let's uh, let's start by actually figuring out how to send an email, just in case we are uh, not quite sure of that. So in order to send an email, we need a send email function. And um, we can we can create a variable here. Uh, the variable we're creating are actually a code unit. So this is a, um, and, and you see, I get all these wrong suggestions. So I'm just gonna turn off, uh, Disable Copilot because it's it's too noisy. So we're going to create a code unit variable, means that we have access to the functionality that exists in that code unit. And in this case, we're going to use the code unit called email. Um, and we selected that, and you see we got that we're using stuff in system.email so if you if you look and say hey this is new this is a, a, the namespace approach in in bc23 and forward so here we have and let me just get rid of this message here uh, so now we have a, a code unit called email so if i do email dot i can see that there's a bunch of functions here but there's a function called send, and we want to send an email. So what do we do with send? Well, right now, it clearly looks like there's something wrong. So if I hit shift control space, I can see that there are four different versions of send. So we call them overloads. So there are different, four different sets of parameters uh, that we can call send with. And um, we can see the first one here takes an email message, which is another code unit. Then we have one that takes an email message uh, and a scenario, an email scenario. And we have one that takes a, an email account. And then I think there's one that takes an, so still a message, then an email account, and then a email connector. So last two are only you should never use unless you're into sending with a very specific uh, account. Usually it's the first two that, that you want to use. And actually, most cases, you will always want to use the one with the scenario because the scenario would enable user to set up saying that if this is the scenario, then use this email account. If that's the scenario, another scenario, then use another email account. But clearly, before we even get to this, we need to pass a email message we can see that's code unit email message. So let's go up and um, create a variable called email message. And that's also a code unit. And this is the email message code unit. So, and, and sometimes people get confused of what a code unit actually is. Because I just said that it was kind of a code library uh, in, and, and, and that's mostly the case with the one called email. But the one called email message is more like an object. Uh, so this is a message and, and the message has 
functions and data and, and so on. Anyway, we can pass this, oh, the email message, we can pass that as a parameter here. And, uh, and then we can, uh, we can put an email uh, scenario and select that the scenario we want to use could be sales invoice. I, I said I want to send, an, yeah, I want to send an email, an invoice. So what this will actually do, the scenario, um, if I go into my business central here uh, and I go into email accounts, uh, email accounts, I uh, this is way less voice control than I was hoping to. Then we can see that I only have one account uh, installed and there are no scenarios assigned to this one. Um, but what we can do is that we could say, okay, let's assign the sales invoice scenario. We will assign this to this uh, account. So now we can see the sales invoice is assigned to this. If I had another one, I could assign something else. So that's typically the way if you say, okay, sales staff needs to go out from sales at yourcompany.com, but, but uh, accounting at yourcompany.com needs to be when you're doing reminders or stuff like that. Uh, you, you'll, you'll never want to actually do that on the send command. Now you just pass and tell what is the scenario that you want. And if you, if you want to say, so, okay, I am, I have a scenario, but it's, it's, it's not on this list, then you can extend. So, so the, this, uh, this enum can actually be extended. So you can add your own email scenarios, uh, which is pretty cool. If you, if you're doing something new in, in your app and, and you're sending something, and create a new uh, scenario and select that. So users have a chance to make sure that they use the right email account. Anyway, that was a slight detour. Um, so now we, we're we sending an email, but clearly this one, we have not told what it is and who it is and all that good stuff. So if we, if we go email message dot, and then we can see there's a bunch of functions here. Uh, Add attachment, add attachment, add recipient, append to body, attachments, loss of information, uh, create, get, get body, get recip uh, recipients, get related attachments. There's a bunch of stuff here. But let's, uh, let's locate create. Because create is, is like a multi-function in, in one. I'll hit the shift control space again. And uh, two recipients, that's a text, a string containing the email address of recipient separated by semicolon. I want to send to demo at hogart.com. Um, again, there are different versions of this. Um, recipients could also be a list of text. So instead of having a semicolon separated field, then you can have a list uh, instead. Then we have a subject. I will call this invoice from, let us be clever and do company name here. Uh, sure we can see this invoice from company name. And then the next one is body. Let's do hello. What about hello YouTube? That's probably better. So now we have two lines of code, create an email message, then use the email code unit to send a message. Okay, so now I'm going to hit a five and we can try this. It's compiled. It's getting deployed to my sandbox. I think my sandbox is the one we are already in here. And I have the, the demo email account opened up here. Uh, so let's see how it goes. We're deploying the first time you deploy an app to a any environment. It takes slightly longer than uh, the preceding deployments because the first time 
you gotta wake up that part of the docker and and let it know that hey now we're coming with an app and the server needs to compile it because even that, that here's an interesting part so the app file that we're sending and creating here um this one is only semi-compiled actually. So symbols has been extracted and, and rearranged and, and 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 everything has been you know validated that is correct. But when you so you send the, the app to the server and the server will actually compile it into believe it or not, compile it into C sharp. And then it will compile the C sharp into a, into a, a .NET assembly, and then that assembly is getting loaded into into the server. Um, but it's a surprisingly long process. Uh, and the first time in a fresh Docker, you need to upload a new app. It takes a couple of seconds extra. So now we're getting ready here, and let's see if we. So so I just added this piece of code in in the the normal spot. Uh, which is the customer list. Uh, and then when I say the normal spot, that's because that's where, you know, the demo, you create a new app and then you get this extension uh, on open page uh, on custom list. So that's easy. Let's go over here and see. We got an invoice from Kronos Canada Incorporated. Hello, YouTube. So we can send an email. So in two lines of code, we have sent an email from Business Central. So that is pretty cool. Um, but we see this is this is just text, right? Hello, YouTube. That that's that's the body, and we can see that these are this is not fancy. So so we could get fancy, and then but in order to be just slightly more fancy, then remember the the overloads here. So if I hit Control Shift Space. Again, uh, we can see that we fulfilled this overload, but the next one has HTML formatted Boolean. So that's an extra parameter. So if I go and say true, now this is HTML. So I can actually say, I think let's try this. So I say strong and then we do not so strong. And let's, I hit a five, we publish, boom, it's already published. This is way faster than, than the first time, right? Um, there we go. I go back to my inbox and I hit refresh. And now you can see the text is no longer just a uh, simple text. This is now HTML and the U is bold, strong. Um, so that's pretty good. So, so that's kind of first step so now we know how to send an html email so the next step as i promised we want to send a, send an invoice then we, we we need to have a report as html right that that is kind of our so if we replace this this string and, and say okay just say body and then we'll create a uh, text variable called body so a text variable can be a billion characters if we really want to so 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 we're home free on on size here so we could do and say body equal oops that was all the quotes on that one there same effect so so now we need to replace body with something um so let's go up here and um and then Think about, we want to print a report. So we can do report dot, and we can go save as. Reports, do you see that's actually a save as HTML. Um, but I prefer save as because that one gives us a couple of extra parameters. So, so, so I'll use report dot save as. And I'll do the same thing, shift control space. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what report. I know the number, it's from 1306. But that's actually a bad way of doing it. It's way better to say report colon colon. 
And then we go and say sales invoice. Um, and then we got a bunch here. So there's sales invoice, preprint sales invoice, North American open sales invoice, standard sales invoice. I'll select that one. Now I'm actually not sure which one it is, so I can go on it and then I can hit F12, which is the same as if I right click and then I go to go to definition. I just hit F12 because I like the keyboard. Then we can see, ah, this is report 1306. I remember the number correct. But the great thing about this is that now we're referring, referencing the, the name. So in theory, maybe Microsoft are not gonna gonna renumber the the reports. But if you work with your own thing, then and for some reason you uh, you re need to renumber from fifty thousand to seventy thousand or whatever it is. Uh, if you just have the number in in here, then the rename this code will fail after the rename. But in this case, as long as we use this name, we'll, we'll just hit the new new name a new number comma and i hit my control shift space again parameters we we're going to ignore parameters now let's see if we can do this without them it's much easier if we can do it without them the next one format and we can see it tells us the the type of this parameter is report format where the type of the first one, the number was integer and the parameters was a text. This is report format. So I can actually type report format. Then I can hit two colons and say, huh, give me HTML. I do comma, but now I got lost my uh, shift control space thing. So I'll just get it back. And then I need to do a outstream. So what is a stream? Well, the stream is an out uh, stream is is like a, a pipe that you connect between something. Um, and an outstream is is a stream where you can put stuff into. So save as would say, give me an outstream so I can put the report into the stream. So clearly we have to go create an outstream variable because we need that. I can put that here uh, and see what else we need. We need a record ref. So we will get back to that in just a second. There's so many components in this. This is a really, really cool example. Um, so we got emails, we got reports, we got streams, and now we got record refs also. So this is like, it's like, it's like Christmas. Um, so I'll put ref in here and then I'll just go up and create a record ref. We'll get back to that in a second. But so right now I created an outstream variable and we put in here as you, this, this function is happy. Uh, but if I try to run this, let's see, it will probably get mad at me. It should, it should really get mad at me. We can see you know, I, the, the debugger is, is not happy. Um, let me just hit a five and see what happens here. here. The current setting of the write mode property is incompatible with the operation. What? Let, let's, let's see that, that, you know, you get an error like this and the first thing we, we're going to do is clearly Google that and see. Uh oh, now we're getting a hogart.com. Um, blog post. In this case, it was report that save as the try to save into an outstream that was not initialized. Huh. Well, thank you, Mr. Hogart. I swear I did not plan this. Uh, um, but it was pretty cool. <laughs> uh, anyway, clearly we have a pipe that we want to write something into, but but 
we're connecting one end of the pipe to report.save as, but there's nothing at the other end. Uh, so we're if if this would allow to proceed, it would just end out in in the middle of nothing. So in order that we need a place to collect this data, um, and we have a place, and the place is is not named very uh, very good because the place is called temp blob, uh, and there's it's a code unit again, and and there's lots of history behind the name. Blob is a binary large object. Well, that's kind of uh, what we want. Uh, and temp means temporary, uh, temporary. Um, but what we can so so what you get with this code unit is that you get a you get a you know a, a piece of memory. Is it? You can just stuff something in it, and it will it will store it, and then you can pull it out again if you want. Uh, so the way we do that is now before we call the report, we we say temp blob, and then we ask it to create an out stream. So that means that we create and, and and the in and out thing here is quickly gets complicated and and confusing. So we we create this outstream so we have a way to put data into the temp blob so so think about that now the outstream which is a is a is a pipe that we can only put something in we can never get anything out of the pipe now we have the other end of the pipe have, is attached to the temp blob so everything that one receives through the outstream it will store in the temp blob which means that if I run this now, it runs, it runs, it runs. And then we get, and right now we get an error in the, in the report. Fair enough. Uh, I have no idea what, get legal statement is not uh, not uh, sure I care uh, you must specify one or more filters to avoid accidental printing all documents um, sure we were gonna do that anyway so clearly we have passed the issue with the with the outstream not connected um, so we, we will conquer how we get stuff out of this one again uh, because that's also interesting. Anyway, so now we need to tell the report that we're only going to print a specific report. Um, we're only going to print a specific invoice. So let's create a another variable here. The uh, posted sales invoice header. How about that? That's a record of the sales invoice header the unposted invoice which also is a sales invoice sits in the sales header table everything unposted sits in the sales header sales line table then when it goes to whatever posted you have separate posted tables for that the posted sales invoice are sitting in the sales invoice header table this is very good so what we can do now is that we, we can we now we have the poster sales in here we can just grab anyone how about the last one that's that's a good one um so now clearly there's an invoice here now whatever invoice that is um what we're gonna do is that we're gonna set a filter on this one so we're actually gonna well get rid of this we're gonna do post the sales in one header just set range. So set range set filters makes do the same thing. Uh, but set filter you you supplied with a filter expression. Set range you supplied with uh, typed values. So in this case, I'm gonna set a filter on the number, and I'm just gonna set a filter of 
the value I have anyway. So we find it to figure out what the value is and then we set a filter. So now this record has a filter. Because AL is strongly typed, we cannot pass a I cannot take this one. It would be the easiest say, okay, let me then I'll give that to the to the save as. Now save as says, uh-oh. We well, I cannot convert from record sales invoice header to record ref. That's just the wrong types. That's not gonna work. Which is why we have the record ref. So a record ref is a variable that can contain a record from any table. And the only thing we have to do here is really to the ref get table. So now we get from the posted. Whoa, posted. I can. Wow, my keyboard is. Oh, there you go. So get the record that we have currently in this value with all the, the, the stuff it has and put that in the ref. So now the ref points to this it's, if you ever worked with pointers back in the days it's kind of a pointer um so let, let's see if we are we are okay for errors now will it print what's happening let's see getting ready I can kill some of the other pages while we do this. Uh oh, did we get it? No, that was another one we got an error from. Boom. This completed and we can verify if we already we got some, uh, some invoices here. Well, we are still just getting the hello YouTube. So, so now we're really close. We're really close. So so now we do have an invoice somehow, but the invoice is now stuck inside this temp blob code unit. And we kind of need to get it out so we can put it into body. Um, and guess what? If we need to get something out of a temp blob, we do the exact opposite as getting stuff into the template and this is where the in and out gets really confusing because what we need is to have the the counterpart of the out stream we need an in stream so an in stream is a stream where you can get the data from somewhere so you connect the pipe to something then you get the data um, and we do the exact same thing here so we can do and say template dot create in stream we take pass our in stream. So now we have we have the container of the data. And so we are attaching one end of the pipe to uh, to the data and then we can get it. Uh, but we still need to figure out where to um, where to to to, uh, to put it. So if I do in stream dot then we can see that there's a function on this one called read text. Read a text from an in-stream object. Sure. The variable that receives the characters that were read. Uh, how about we tell this one to read this into body and then we stop putting hello YouTube into the body. Let's hit a five. What can go wrong? I hit a five. Maybe we should have walked this through with the debug. We can walk through with the debugger in a second. Boom, let's go to the box and see. We got a PDF. So that's, uh, that is actually unexpected. So that's good, that's good. Um, let's go in here and then let's uh, do report layouts and make sure that we have a layout that can actually do and, and now i'm just going to say anything jake have you yelled at the screen no we did select html here um 
So let's see what we have. So if I select sales invoice blue, which is a, if you want HTML, I think you have to go with Word. Um, so I can do and set this as default. Um, we're just going to try this again. So I go to customers. Because whenever I open the customer card, this is this is what's happening. We're running something. We go here. Let's see if we got a new email. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Here's our invoice as the email body. I think I tested something with a with long. Uh, I actually think I tested something else in this, but anyway, we got an HTML. So, so let's uh, let let's let's walk through this with the debugger and see what's happening. Um, just to repeat everything, I'll place a breakpoint on the very first thing. So I'll hit a five. We're doing this again. Uh, we got a break. Okay, so the first thing that we did was just grab a random invoice. I do that by doing a find find last. So if I mouse over posted invoice header right now, we might actually have a value, but that's super undefined. What's happening in in in, in a record before we do anything? Um, data migration let's actually just raise another i think we might hit some other code so we let's do another breakpoint wow we're not allowed to do that let's try this again sometimes the debugger is is weird so do we have something now we do i hit a f you know what I think I have the version of BC23 where line numbers are off debugging. So that was a really bad idea. Uh, I'm not gonna, you know what? We're not gonna debug this because we know how it works. So, so let's actually stop the debugger and just repeat. Uh, this is because I, I can tell you what's happening. Um, if I go here and I say behind myself, I find help and support. I am on a 23.0, oh, 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 uh, and uh, uh, that one had a debugging issue when it came to namespace uh, documents. Uh, ignore this because I totally forgot that was the one I was running on. But let, let's uh, walk through the code uh, at the end. We find an invoice, just because we need an invoice, a random invoice. Then we set a filter on itself on the number, say, okay, if this was invoice number 17, set a filter to see we will only see invoice that has the number 17. Um, and actually let's reorder this slightly. And then we create a record ref variable to point at this record with the filter. So we, um, because we need to pass the filter into the report. Um, then we take, we prepare our storage of random data. And you saw that even if it was PDF, it's going to just send it off because it's it, this one will store binary data. The blob uh, will uh, binary large object. Uh, it will it will it will store anything. We create a stream, so we we take the blob like like 
think about the the, the temple as a, as a you know tanker truck. Uh, so it has a big empty storage tank. We connect a host to it, a a one way host that we can only send stuff into the tank. Then we run the report. We tell what report we want to run. We ask it to do HTML, and we give it we give it the pipe to the tank and say okay whatever output you create the report runner pump it into that pipe we gave you because we have connected that in the other end to a place where we can store it and we also supply a ref so we get the filter and tell the report that when you run use this filter so you only run the report on that single invoice then when we're done with this, we connect a different pipe to the tank. Now this is this is a pipe that is the other way around, so we can only get stuff out of the tank through this pipe. Then we ask the pipe because this is a smart pipe. Uh, the smart pipe can uh, can do stuff by. There are some cases where you need to pass it if you want to. Let's say we wanted to download it, the content. Then we would pass the the in stream to the download function and say, hey, download, grab the data from here. But this is a smart pipe, so we can tell the pipe to, okay, whatever you can get out of out of yourself, put it into this text string, uh, te text variable. In this case, we use our body. And uh, the last two lines were the very first we did. We created an email message with a receiver and a caption and we passed the body and we told the body what H is HTML formatted. So the body came from the in-stream, came from report, and then we passed the body to the email.send uh, function and I go back to my inbox here. We, we got plenty of versions of this already. Bob's your uncle. Here is the um, here's the invoice as the email body. With this, you can uh, what 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 I do in 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 many customer cases is that you know the customer want me to um, want to here we need to send this email that looks whatever it looks like, uh, and instead of that I take that and hard code into the extension. Um, I create a, a, a mail merge app, so to speak, and uh, also a mail merge um, table, and then a kind of just an empty report that runs on that table. So the customer can through custom report layouts can go in and, and design how their email body in Word, they design how they design how their email body should look. And then whenever I get to this, I do exact thing that we uh, I, I, I did just here. I go through this process. I call my, my specialized report. I populate all the merge fields in my specialized table. And I create HTML. Then I pass it to an email and send it. So by the end of the day, the own, right now, we have hard-coded the, uh, the receiver and, and the caption because I'm also lazy right now uh, but the content the body of the email is not hard coded uh, we saw it that i had to go in and select a, a layout that would actually render an html um, so i think it's a pretty in, in reality uh, I, I keep switching back to this one if we get rid of this line and uh, we uh, we look at this then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine lines of code to do all this. So nine lines of code to grab something, while up the 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 the, the tanker truck uh, thing, run the report, create the email, send it off. I think that's pretty cool in nine lines of code, uh, and it only took me forty minutes to explain. Um, so that's. That's pretty good. Uh, anyway, try do try it out and 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 let me know in the comments below how you how you're getting on. Uh, 
Um, are there some some of are there things in this process that are still aren't clear? Then let me know, and and, and we'll try to uh, try to handle it in. in uh, Handle all the stuff in uh, in the comments. Anyway, when you're ready uh, for more ale hacking, this video is for you. Check it out. It's a good one. I'll see you there. Take care. Bye.